All right, now I'd like to show how to do um, create organic characters. And organic characters, think about humans, animals, um, anything living that um, is, it can be a lot more kind of difficult to create good looking organic things, especially in Maya. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show how to do that. Um, and one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in some images. Okay, so you can see I have a front and a side view of the character. And before I even bring those in, I have to set up a projects folder. I can see here that I have some different projects folders uh, previously, like the snowman. Everything in these folders is going to be things that are rel um, relevant to the snowman project, okay? So I don't wanna confuse that with uh, the computer project or even the character project that I'm creating now. Notice there's no folder yet. So I'm gonna go to file, project window, new, and I'm gonna call this character. And I can see this going on the desktop and I'll click accept. Okay. When that happens, I can see that here's the folder. And if I open it up, it automatically created all of this stuff in here. And all of this stuff is really gonna be empty. And I'm gonna go into source images and I'm gonna go ahead and put these images in there. Okay. Now, this is from a character that I created, but I'm gonna show you where you can get your own starting images if you'd like them. So there's a website called theblueprints.com and in theblueprints.com, you can see that they have a lot of different things here, okay? And I could say, I could go to the Blueprints database and I could even find hard surface vehicles or weapons or you know a lot of different things. But if I go to humans here, um, maybe you can see there's anatomy, animals, comic book characters, humans, okay? Um, I can find different characters here. You can see there's a, a, quite, quite a few. And it tells me here if they have kind of the um, front, top, right, and side, or rear and side, I think. If I go to athletic male, let me see. Yeah, you can see just kind of a generic male. And I can see that this character is in what's called a T pose, meaning that the it looks like he's standing in a T. Um, and that is often, that's a very normal pose. That way we can kind of see more of the side of the character, okay? Another pose that you might see often is something called the A pose. So an A pose would be more like this, where uh, the character, the arms are kind of at a more natural position. And you can see that that kind of blocks the side, but I feel like it's also not as, um, the shoulders aren't as disrupted. Um, so either an A pose or a T pose. Personally, I like working with A poses, and that's what I'm gonna be working with. So I'll go ahead and just kind of get my image in, in there. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to create polygon primitives, plane. I'm gonna scale this plane roughly to the size of the grid from the center one. And it's important that I keep it square, okay? It's important that I don't stretch it like that or like that, okay? I wanna keep it perfectly square uh, that way uh, I know that there's no, going to be no distortion on my image because my image is square already. Under the inputs, I'm just going to make this one and one. Here we go. And now if I rotate that up like this, I want to make sure that that's at a perfect 90 degree angle. And then I can go ahead and move it. I'm going to set it to the back and bring it up like this. Excellent. Now I can hit Control D to duplicate it. And then I can rotate this one. I'm gonna type in 90 degrees on the Y. And then I'm gonna bring this up like that and like this. Okay, this is a very good start so far. I can see that if I look at the back of the Q, um, the planes, they're black and the front are gray. That's okay. Now I'll go ahead and add the images. To add the images, I'm gonna click on a plane right click and hold, assign a new material, and I'm gonna choose Lambert. 
Then in the attribute editor, I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the Lambert tab, okay? I could call this front. And on color, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add um, a file. So I'm gonna to go to file and then the folder. And then here, because I had my projects folder set, it automatically knew where I, to look for the, fold, um, the files. So there's the front of the character. And now I can press six and there I can see the image on there. By the way, if I press five, it's gonna look like the image disappeared. It didn't really, it's still there, but five is shaded mode, six is showing textures. Okay, great, so I've got that. Now if I go to this one, I can go here and maybe instead of assign new material, I can go to favorite material and it gives you the ones that you most likely are gonna need. So I could just find Lambert right here and I'm gonna call this one side and then I have to hit enter. Then under color, I'm gonna click on this checker box. Then I'm gonna click on file, click on the folder. And then here, I'm gonna say the side. Open that up. Excellent. That is a great starting point for this. Um, the only thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that they're aligned properly. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the, click on the four different views and now I can Hold out Alt and kind of zoom this back. Hold out Alt, kind of zoom that back. Alt, right mouse button, and or middle mouse button. Okay, there we go. And now notice I can press six in each one. Okay, there we go. And maybe close my attribute, there we go. And I could make this full screen, there we go. Now I'm gonna create a cube and I'm gonna make this uh, kind of as big as the character. Okay, now you can see that it's covering up the character. So that could be kind of a, kind of a catch 22. It's kind of like, well, I, I wanna model this character, but when I put something on there, I can't really see them. So what I could do is I could go to shading and I could say X-ray. And now maybe I tap the space bar. And now what I'm gonna do, right click, go to vertex, Right click, go to vertex. I'm gonna grab these vertices and I'm gonna move it so it's right at the top of the head. I'm also gonna move this so it's, I'm gonna move this whole object so it's centered on him, there we go. And I can see that this bottom, right click, go to vertex, move this right there, perfect. If I look at this way, once again, I'm just tapping the space bar, shading X-ray, go to vertex, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put this right at the character like that. Okay, cool. So now just as um, what I was saying before is I'm gonna put some edge loops on here to see if, I, if this guy's aligned. So for example, if I go up to create or insert edge loop under mesh tools, make sure that you're in the modeling menu set insert edge loop and if I click on one of these edges here notice I can move it up and down and if I put this right at his chin what I'm trying to verify is that is that his chin from the side view okay if I go here I want to make sure that that's right at the bottom of the nose and that's right at the bottom of the nose it's also at the bottom of the ear if I go here I can see that that's at the top of the ear top of the ear yes that looks good okay I could go to other areas. I mean, I could kind of test anything, anything that I can see on this side. So maybe like the thumb, the bottom of the thumb. Uh, let's see. That looks like pretty much exactly the bottom of the thumb and the bottom of the thumb. Yes. Okay, great. So now I can see that my image planes are aligned properly. Um, and realize I'm not starting to model this. I was just confirming that the front and the side views are aligned. I could delete this shape. I'm gonna go into the channel box and I'm gonna select these, being careful not to move them. And on the display layers, I'm gonna click on this fourth icon here to create a new layer and assign selected objects. And I'm gonna call this reference. Save. 
And then I'm also going to click on this twice to restrict it with that R. Now I can't accidentally click on this. And the last thing I want to do is that when I rotate this, I want the back of this to be invisible. So if I go to shading, back face culling, awesome. It's kind of like magic. We, the back of it turns invisible and uh, we also can accidentally click on it. So this is a really good starting point uh, for modeling. And now I'll begin the modeling process in the next lesson.